This is Witchbase News for Friday the 17th of December 2021 I'm Commander Burr. An Elite Dangerous News this week Frontier reveal new information during an in-depth developer led look at fleet carrier interiors in their Christmas livestream there's an all new time limited seasonal in game event gifting credits, a ship and unique cosmetics running right now. Patch 9.2 updates Elite Dangerous Horizons and Elite Dangerous Odyssey and the massive Operation Ida holiday haul begins in earnest. To make sure you don't miss any of our videos hit like and subscribe and remember to click the little bell icon and select all notifications and if you'd like to help directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon via the link in the video description. The troubles that we reported on earlier in the week that arose from the arrival of update 9 and update 9.1 appear to have been largely fixed with the deployment yesterday of update 9.2. The patch addresses problems in Elite Dangerous Horizons on both consoles and PCs and Elite Dangerous Odyssey on PC. On both platforms and products the new multi limpic controller module has had its mass corrected, your fire group panel navigation should now be working, the class C operations multi limpic controller no longer shows as class F and fire group columns should now disappear again when empty. In Elite Dangerous Odyssey genetic sampling via the handheld bioscanner should again be working for all biologics. Frontier have also listed a couple of known issues which are still being actively investigated those being hostile ships sometimes showing as non-hostile on the ship radar and some fire groups not matching what is being output by the ship. The Station Repair Specialist Player Group Operation Ida's month long festive season event moves up a gear tomorrow on Saturday the 18th of December with the commencement of the massive 24 hour station repair effort. As of this recording the galaxy's finest station repair hauling specialists have 14 carriers preloaded with the assorted materials needed to repair a Thargoid damaged station. That's as much as 350,000 units of commodities and an army of commanders standing by ready to empty them. You too can join in the hauling frenzy. I've linked to the Operation Ida Discord and website for the holiday haul event below. The manic hauling action itself kicks off at 1500 hours UTC on Saturday. A Galnet article featuring the mysterious master thief known as the Winking Cat appeared in game this week that seemed to hint at some sort of in game event. Upon further investigation not only did commanders discover that part 1 of the event is indeed underway right now but also that the event is rewarding amongst other things some unique festive in game items. The hunt based event will be taking place between now and the first week in January and is separated into two halves of 3 steps each. I won't go into any serious spoiler territory here the full solution to part 1 is linked in the description below. It's very easy to complete but for part 1 at least you only have until the 30th of December to get the rewards from the event with part 2 starting on the 23rd of December and finishing on the 6th of January. The two colliding dates meaning there's a magical week between the 23rd and the 30th of December where you'll be able to do both parts all at once. We're going to put the rewards on screen now. They're definitely worth going after but if you don't want your Christmas present spoiled look away now. Ok they're off screen you can now look back. The event is running across PC and consoles and it doesn't matter if you're running Elite Dangerous Odyssey or Elite Dangerous Horizons you can still benefit from it. Once we have more details about part 2 of the event we'll post a link to it on the community section of this very YouTube channel which you'll see pop up in your feed so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. Frontier hosted their festive season livestream on Thursday. The stream included a review of the years events, a stellar screenshot of the year and a cryptic Christmas quiz but by far and away the highlight of the stream was the much anticipated developer interview and walkthrough of the new fleet carrier interiors feature that is arriving next year. 
Whilst Frontier had previously shown some work in progress interiors footage last week after a rough version of the feature arrived in game unexpectedly in update 9 the footage shown last night was of a higher quality again and included some more functionality as well as the all important talk through of the carriers features by senior game designer Darren Halil. Here's the new information that we learned from the stream. There are now NPCs populating the hallways and spaces of your carriers and some of those NPCs are indeed the ones you see in your carrier management screen that you can hire and indeed fire if you don't like the cut of their jib. Whilst that was really good to see and something we'd been hoping for here at the burr pit there was no word yet on whether you can put them out of an airlock for doggedly refusing to refuel your carrier with the tons of tritium held in the cargo hold when the tritium depot runs dry and you're not around. Pioneer Supplies, holders of the galaxy wide monopoly on personal guns and spacesuit sales will be extending their vice like grip even further on the idea of a free market economy by installing a franchise outlet on your carrier if you so desire. Rather than carry limited stock on selected items like that seen in the galaxy's starports the carrier outlets will carry stock of every single thing meaning if you're near a carrier that has the outlet active you'll be able to buy a grade 1 version at the very least of every on foot item in the game. Carrier owners will be able to set a premium rate on top of the base price as well similar to how commodities and services are currently supplied on carriers. Also if the carrier owner doesn't wish to sell illegal items like the e-breach then they're able to toggle that item off themselves making it unavailable. Next Darren went on to talk about the bar area and this came with one of the more significant reveals of the stream. The bartender service on board a carrier will work slightly differently to how it does in starports. Carrier owners will be able to use the bartender service in a similar fashion to the existing carrier commodity markets but instead of trading in commodities the carrier will add supply or demand for on foot engineering materials. Whilst it wasn't explicitly stated if all on foot materials can be traded this way or only selected items whatever the case when implemented this could potentially make the gathering of at least some on foot engineering essentials much much easier which I know from personal experience will be music to the ears of many a commander. Next the much requested vista genomics feature was touched upon. The carrier born version of everyone's favourite bacteria collectors will function in a very similar way to the carrier version of Universal Cartographics with there being a markdown on the payday received by commanders for the convenience of being able to use the service away from the bright lights of civilization. The big question that remains unanswered at the moment is whether Vistagen or indeed any of the new services can be activated while a carrier is out in the deep black or whether it needs to return to a carrier admin system as is the case with current carrier outfitting options. As the new services are essentially franchise shops on a concourse rather than a whole service being installed into a carrier it would seem logical that a visit to the dry dock would be an unnecessary inconvenience to do what essentially equates to lifting up a shutter and putting up some signage but as well we all know video games don't follow the same rules as the rest of the universe. There are hundreds of commanders who already have their carriers seated tens of thousands of light years away in the deep black who will doubtless be looking very keenly at the answer to that particular question. The on foot equivalent of the existing shipyard will auto magically be installed and available if a commander has the shipyard on their carrier already and that service doesn't come with a vendor but rather an interface as it's a service that is being supplied by the carrier owners themselves and not a third party entity as is the case with Vista Genomics or Pioneer Supplies. During the talk the team touched very briefly on the carrier jump experience. Whilst it will be viewable from inside the vessel the jump itself is not yet being shown Frontier quite rightly not keen to spoil that experience just yet. They did say that all commanders will need to be seated for the event as we revealed in our previous video about fleet carrier interiors the furniture on the huge vessels is usable and any commanders not already seated for the event will be automatically seated while the carrier itself moves locations. 
One really nice bonus, the carrier owner and anyone in their current team will have exclusive access to the raised bridge deck area which includes the ships con, commander chair and Star Trek style captains ready room which itself has seen some further seating and decor added since we last saw it. It's not yet clear if the ready room comes with any extra functionality but either way it could provide a nice escape for the commander of a particularly busy carrier. Finally Derin made mention of the carrier decor itself. The team have built the carrier interiors to very much reflect the claustrophobic spaces of something akin to a submarine albeit a huge actually quite spacious submarine. There are very few double height spaces with most of the carrier interior consisting of relatively tight corridors and some spaces displaying features such as exposed pipework. The lighting and colouring of the interior space can also be changed and customised to a degree by the carrier owner to reflect a scheme that better reflects their choices. Whether it's an overall aesthetic that is switched out similar to the way carrier exterior layouts are changed or whether more granularity is possible we don't yet know. We'd imagine further customization is likely going to be tied to the ARC store at some point as well. That would seem like a no brainer for Frontier and likely the sort of thing that a lot of carrier owners will absolutely lap up. Personally I want ornaments and pot plants and pets and pictures and TVs and a fish tank and a teapot and a chaise lounge. Thanks. One final piece of information the carrier interiors update has been bumped to update 11 instead of update 10 but we're assured that it's still on track to arrive in the game early in the new year. Are you planning on following the Smiling Cats paper trail to bag yourself some goodies and are you pitching in with Operation Ida as they repair a whole station in a day? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.